Good evening. You may be seated. And you know, they did just that. On that evening, on that afternoon, when Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he ran into some folks that were fishing. And they were out in their boats, and they were fishing. And Jesus said, follow me. And that's exactly what they did. Now, a, a good psychologist would say that that would be reckless abandonment, amen? But immediately, was it a hunch? Was it a hope? They followed Jesus. As 21st century, as 21st century Christians, we need to understand that their actions were not without precedent. Because in the rabbinical tradition, it was, it was thought that if you wanted to learn or know what someone was doing, you would have like a little on-the-job training program, which meant that you would follow a mentor or a teacher, or Jesus, who was rabbi. And it is assumed that when you have contact with this person, you're going to learn, you're going to follow, you're going to take up their, their ways of doing things. And James and John and Peter and Simon, who Jesus calls out to, are not perhaps complete strangers. Perhaps they had been over at the River Jordan when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist. Perhaps they had heard somewhere in the circle of, of stories about Jesus' wilderness trek and the temptations. But whatever it was, whatever it was, something drew them to Jesus. And they wanted more. They wanted more. The question tonight is what attracts you to Jesus? Is it Jesus' is preaching? Is it his teaching? Someone said that when they heard Jesus speak, they never heard anyone speak like that before. He spoke with authority. What attracts you to Jesus? Is it his ability to calm rough seas? His ability to just speak those words, peace be still, and the winds obey. Or could it be something in the name? In the African-American church that I grew up in, every now and then someone would pull up a hymn and it went like this, I'm not going to sing. I'll say the words. This goes like this, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name, amen? Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Oh, Jesus, something about that name has power. For the would-be disciples, the invitation to follow me was an invitation to lose family, friends. We read in the book of Mark that they left the father in the boat. But you know what? That's just the tip of the iceberg. The invitation to follow means losing understandings, attitudes, behaviors, and fears is an invitation to come outside of our comfort zones and our echo chambers. It's an invitation to experience godly peace, contentment, liberation, and justice. It's an invitation that was issued many, many years ago, but it remains an unchanged challenge for human beings and for us. Jesus said, follow me and lose something, toss it aside, or even just be in the process of tossing it aside, follow me. If we've had life tumble down on us over the last 18 months, we've learned a lot about ourselves. Can somebody say amen? We have learned a lot. In this season of racial reconciliation and awareness, we have learned, and some have known this for many times, that we are strangers to one another. Here's an interesting statistic. 75% of white people have no black friends. 66% of black people have no white friends. We don't know our neighbors. And it is often 
Sometimes our discourse is ruled by conflict, polarization, fear, and a, just a plain lack of urgency. Follow me. But you see, this invitation that Jesus offers is an invitation to unlearn distance between ourselves. You see, unlearning this distance requires us to have a willingness to get close to people. I know we have the COVID thing, right? But I'm just saying. <laughs> We've got to find out ways to get close to people that are different from ourselves, people that we might not see, people that are shunned, people who might, uh, I say, have been sinned against mostly by systems of oppression and injustice. You see, Jesus got close to people because he noticed them. Yes, he saw people. Jesus was a great noticer. You see, growing up as a minority under the rule of the Roman government, Jesus didn't have the luxury of not noticing others. Are you a good noticer? We read in scripture, we see that Jesus sees people in the midst of crowds. And blind Bartimaeus is on the side of the road and the, and, and the disciples are trying to keep him quiet. Jesus says, no, bring him to me. Bartimaeus, what do you need? What do you want? Don't push him away. And what about the widow who was in church? And she bought everything that she had and the people said, it's not enough to make a difference. But Jesus said, She's given more than anyone here because she's given out, they have given out of their abundance, but she has given out of her love. Again, the children are coming to Jesus. They want to hang out with them. The disciples are saying, I don't think so. Pushes them away, but Jesus says, oh, no, 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 no. Bring these children to me, for this is the kingdom of heaven, right here. Our children, you don't push them away. Jesus could see every heart and every child. Jesus held hands with those who had leprosy, wiped tears, and most of all, he took the time. He took the time to notice. He took the time to care. There's power in being close. You see, when we get close to things and situations, we hear things that we can't hear from a distance. We see things that we can't see when we're up close. When we draw near and incline our ear to others, we notice them. In drawing near, I say we exercise the muscle of the heart, which is compassion. Because see, compassion links us all together and it helps us get outside of ourselves a little bit. And it gives us a capacity to outreach. Compassion enables us, it draws us, it empowers us, it calls us. It tells us to go beyond ourselves to the pulse of the world. In other words, it says, get out of your own way, amen? Compassion makes us fully human. And God's compassion does something really, really interesting because it fuels us to take responsibility for others and ourselves and to act and then to do justice. Compassion, we love sympathy, but we need compassion and mercy to move us so that we can see and notice one another. Compassion makes us human, and we are built to be together. Now, when I was a child, and that wasn't long ago, you're supposed to laugh. It's a little joke. It's a little joke. It's a little joke. Um, there was a game that maybe you played. I played it, and it was called Follow the Leader. Who played Follow the Leader? Anybody? Okay, so you know how this game works. Okay, there is one person who's designated as the leader, right? And then that's the head person. Everybody's supposed to follow behind them, okay? And you're supposed to mimic the leader. When Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee and calling out, 
Peter and Simon and James and John, his invitation was not for them to just tag along behind him. There's a difference. And I'll tell you what it is. The Greek translation of the word follow means to accompany. It means to assist. It means to walk side by side. So this invitation that Jesus extends to us, follow me, invites us to come up close to Jesus and to walk side by side. And when we go outside of our comfort zones, we need somebody, don't we? We need somebody to walk side by side. The invitation tells us and invites us to let go of fears, egos, doubts. And it's a beautiful thing to be lost and then to be found and to be found at home in the arms of the awesome love of God, the arms of Jesus. Jesus calls us to be alive, to be vibrant, to have joy and to be filled with the love that Jesus found in God. The invitation to follow me is to trust God with your very life. Now here's the closer. There was a man up in New York, up in Niagara Falls, and a tightrope has been strung across the falls. Have you been there? Pretty, pretty fast place. So anyway, there's a rope, and a man's going to walk across the tightrope, and he asks the crowd, do you want to see me do this? And what do you think the crowd said? Yeah, do it. And you know what? He did it. He walked across and walked back, done. And so then he, um, he said to the crowd, who would like to see me um, do it with a the, with the wheelbarrow? And they said, yes, do it. So he gets up on the type rope, no big deal, and he does it again. Then he says, I am going to walk across the type rope with the wheelbarrow. I'm going to be blindfolded now. Who would like to get into the wheelbarrow? <laughs> the crowd stopped. <laughs> you get it? Do you get it? This follow me is a serious invitation. It's an invitation that allows us to go beyond who we even think we can be. And in this day and the era and the things that we are faced with, we need to figure out if this is our path. It's a path that many have traveled down for, for centuries. And here we are to be so blessed to be invited. There's a path for us to walk, and there is an invitation. And Jesus said, follow me. Will you follow?